Hi everyone, it's Katrina. Number 8. Harrison Okene On May 26, 2013, a tugboat by the name of Jascon 4 was on its way to a large oil tanker just over a dozen miles off the coast of Nigeria. The tugboat was meant to secure the oil tanker from the Chevron oil platform. There were 12 men aboard the tugboat and none of them had any idea that they were about to sail into a nightmare. One of the crew members was Harrison Okene, the cook. He had just woken up and was sitting on the toilet when a wave smashed into the side of the tugboat. The ship capsized, resulting in unstoppable flooding. Water poured in, the cabins and passageways were filled with the ocean. Harrison pulled on his pants and started trying to escape the ship, but he couldn't get out. He was forced into a toilet room as he tried to seek refuge in the officers' cabins. At this point, the ship was underwater. It was drifting down to the bottom of the ocean. But by an unprecedented miracle, Harrison's toilet area formed an air pocket. The 29-year-old chef was left at the bottom of the ocean inside a tiny pocket of oxygen. It was not a great place to be stuck, but at least he was alive. It was dark, cold, and lonely. Harrison spent 60 hours in his air pocket before South African diver Nico Van Heerden and his team entered the sunken vessel. The diving company had been sent by Chevron to retrieve the bodies of the crew, assuming they were all dead. Ten bodies were recovered, with one lost never found. Divers never expected to find a man alive down there. Even with Harrison found alive and well, the divers still had to get him out. He had spent so much time at a depth of over 100 feet deep that he would need multiple decompression stops on his way out. There was also the issue that he was almost dead from being in the air pocket for 60 days with no food. The CO2 from his own breath had built up inside the air pocket, threatening to kill him. Okane had survived on just a can of coke and spent three days in the darkness praying to God for a miracle. He had almost given up hope when he suddenly heard the sound of a boat, a hammering on the side of the vessel, and then he saw lights. He said he knew it had to be a diver, but he was on the wrong end of the cabin. They didn't see him. The DNC diving team was looking for the remains of the crew, not for survivors. Desperate, Okane swam to grab the diver. He reached out to tap him and probably gave the diver a heart attack. At first, he thought it was a corpse reaching out from the darkness. But in a touching moment caught on camera, they realized he was still alive. Divers immediately placed an air hose in the pocket to douse him in fresh air. The rescuers managed to get Harrison from the boat and into a diving bell, where he was placed under pressure inside a decompression chamber. Harrison went through decompression for three days, hanging out with the rescue crew. After his harrowing ordeal, he vowed never to step foot in the water again. But two years later, in 2015, he returned to the ocean, this time to become a qualified diver. He wanted to be a rescue diver and save others that were stuck underwater, just like he was. Number 7. Stuck in Bed In Canada, Carol Smith found herself trapped in a terrifying and unlikely place. During the 2022 holidays, Carol was staying with her daughter and son-in-law in Montreal. She had recently turned 93 years old. Her daughter had a handy Murphy bed for her mother to use, also known as a wall bed. This is the kind of bed that folds down from the wall, then folds up to make space. Carol's daughter had purchased the bed in 2020 specifically for guests. Maybe you've slept in one. On the fateful day in December, Carol awoke to the sound of a motor. The bed was closing without anyone's help. Carol, in her early 90s, didn't exactly have the lightning-fast reflexes to jump out of bed. She didn't even realize what was happening. By the time she tried to struggle out of the sheets, it was too late. Carol was stuck in the Murphy bed as it folded in on itself, crunching her like she was stuck in a garbage compactor. Luckily, Carol's son-in-law, John, was in the house as this was happening. He was on the first floor when he heard what sounded like a person faintly crying. It was early in the morning, though, so John thought maybe his mother-in-law was having a nightmare. He and his wife crept up to the guest room to check on Carol, but she wasn't there. The bed was folded in the wall as if Carol had gotten up and left. Caroline noticed a small gap in the bed preventing it from fully closing. And that was when she realized her mother was stuck in the wall. She pushed all the buttons on the remote to try and open the bed and nothing worked. She grabbed the end and tried to pull it down. It wouldn't budge. 
John snatched the top metal bar of the bed and pulled down so hard the piston snapped and the bed crashed down on top of him. Carol was lying unresponsive in the fetal position. She wasn't breathing. Caroline administered CPR. At the same time, John phoned 911. An ambulance took Carol to a nearby hospital where she was found to have two broken ribs and her clavicle separated from her shoulder. She survived, but nearly suffocated to death because of a malfunctioning Murphy bed. Number 6. John Edward Jones John Edward Jones experienced the biggest nightmare imaginable for someone afraid of tight spaces. During his first expedition into Nutty Putty Cave in Utah, he got stuck in a narrow passageway. It happened on November 24, 2009. John Edward Jones is still stuck in that same narrow passageway as of 2023. His body is forever sealed inside the deadly cave of horror. John entered the cave with some friends and family. John was 26, married, and had a daughter who recently turned one. He studied medicine in Virginia and was only in Utah for a brief Thanksgiving holiday break with family. The initial expedition into the cave was perfectly fine. Everybody went spelunking along the normal routes where people don't get stuck and die. But John was bored of that. He wanted to go in search of the most dangerous passage in the cave system, a narrow tunnel known as the Birth Canal. He thought he'd found it, but John had found something even worse. John tried to wriggle through a narrow passage head first. Then he got stuck. It wasn't the Birth Canal, it was the Death Canal. The space John was trying to fit through is barely 10 inches across and 18 inches high. John exhaled the air in his chest to slink deeper into the passage. Then, when he inhaled, he was stuck in place. He could not move at all. His brother Josh tried to pull him out by his calves, but it was the wrong move. John was briefly freed, but then he slipped deeper into the passage and got stuck even worse. His arms became pinned under his chest so that he couldn't even wiggle. Help came, but it was a tough operation. John was stuck 400 feet into Nutty Putty Cave and about 100 feet beneath the surface of the planet. Susie Matola reached John at 12.30 a.m. on November 25th. He had already been stuck for three and a half hours. Over the following 24 hours, more than 100 people tried to free John Edward Jones from the Death Canal. They used every trick in the book, but it was no use. Shortly after midnight on November 25th, John died from cardiac arrest. There was no way to get his body out of the cave. It remains down there wedged in the space as a tragic reminder of the dangers of these kinds of adventures. Number 5. Naked in a Well Pipe In 2017, a naked man got stuck in a pipe. In a rural village near the Chinese city of Xiaoguang, the poor naked villager was on his way to a communal toilet in the middle of the night when he fell into a well. He lost his footing, tumbled into the underground structure, and slid about 30 feet down before the tunnel grew so narrow that he got stuck. He was down there hollering for what felt like ages before his cries finally alerted relatives. His family could hear him, but they couldn't free him. He had gotten jammed about halfway to the bottom of the well and was twisted in such a terrible position he couldn't grab the rescue rope. Imagine falling into one of those Super Mario tunnels but then you get stuck halfway down like Santa getting stuck in a tapered chimney. That was exactly what happened to the unnamed villager. Authorities were worried he was going to die down there. They quickly pumped oxygen into the well to keep him alive. Then they brought in excavators. Rescuers had to dig 26 feet down with heavy machinery to get near the man. Then firemen dug the rest of the way using shovels. He was finally pulled out of the well, naked and covered in dust and slime. According to the local reports, it's fairly common in poor rural villages for people to wander naked to the communal toilets in the middle of the night. Gives the term naked and afraid a whole new meaning. Number 4. Anna Uskova and the Ice Hole In winter 2022, Anna Uskova got trapped underneath the ice. Anna was celebrating the Christian Orthodox Epiphany. This is a celebration that commemorates the baptism of Jesus Christ in the River Jordan as is described in the Bible. Anna and many other devout Christian Orthodox celebrate the holiday by jumping into blessed water. The idea is that blessed water has healing powers during the yearly ceremony. Despite the temperatures being well below freezing, Anna still chose to jump into the allegedly blessed waters of the Orodes River in Russia. 
The terrible incident was captured on video. First, a rectangular hole was cut into the ice. Then Anna stripped down to her bathing suit and stood at the edge of the impossibly dark hole. Anna was a successful lawyer, married to her businessman husband Yuri. She hadn't in a million years thought she would get stuck. While she prepared to jump, her husband and two young children watched from the sidelines. Anna crossed herself and jumped into the ice hole, but she didn't come back up. After a few seconds, Yuri realized there was a problem and jumped in after her, but he couldn't find her. Nobody found her. Anna got stuck under the ice hole and was never seen again. According to Emergency Rescue Service member Alexander Zuyev, the location of the ice hole was not great. Anna chose to dive into the river at a place where there were no rescuers and where there wasn't enough lighting. He said, in hindsight, she should have used a safe ice hole like everybody else. Others, celebrating Epiphany at the same river, had organized a safe ice hole with rescuers on standby and a wooden frame with stairs. Sadly, Anna was likely washed away by the current. Number 3. Stranded on an Island Getting trapped on a tropical island in the Bahamas sounds like a dream vacation. But for three people who really did get stranded on an uninhabited island in 2021, it was the worst vacation of their lives. For 33 days, the trio of Cubans were trapped on Anguilla Cay in the Bahamas. It started with an innocent boat trip. Two men and a woman got into a boat and went for a leisurely joyride. But a rogue wave wiped them out, causing them to capsize. The three people swam to the only piece of land close to them, a tiny island with nobody on it. For the next four weeks, they tried desperately to escape. They created makeshift signals out of bright fabric to alert airplanes and helicopters overhead, but nothing they did seemed to work. They had no fresh water and nothing to eat except island rats. The trio survived by drinking coconut milk and hunting the rats. They also feasted on conch shell meat when they could get it. Just when it looked like the end was near, the U.S. Coast Guard noticed some unusual movement on the island. They turned around and checked it out and sure enough saw three castaways desperately signaling them to get closer. The Coast Guard dropped food and water, but there was nowhere for them to dock. They dropped the radio for the trio and told them they'd be back for them later. The next day, the stranded Cubans were rescued. Command officer Sean Conant for the Coast Guard 7th District said it was the air crew of a routine patrol that spotted the people in distress. If it hadn't been for the Coast Guard's routine patrols of the area, the trio may have died on that island. Number 2. Stuck in the Sewer During the height of the 2023 tourist season in Thailand, an American got trapped in the sewer. Jonathan Vaimaona told local authorities he slipped and fell into a storm drain on the street and got trapped underground. Hours later, a security guard named Charlie Boonsri was on his way to buy something to drink from the store when he heard a strange noise coming from the sewer. He got down and peeked through the grill of the drain and saw a pale white guy staring back at him. The security guard went for help. Fire and rescue operators launched a quick operation to get the American tourist out of the sewer. He was about five feet underground inside a drainage pipe, which was only about two feet wide. Photos taken of the rescue show the American shirtless, filthy, and covered in sewage slime. Jonathan had only arrived in Thailand a few days earlier. Spending the night in a sewage pipe had not been on his itinerary. Jonathan wasn't seriously injured, but he was likely more than a little embarrassed. Number 1. The Elevator In 2016, a woman got into an elevator in the Chinese city of Xi'an. Unbeknownst to her, she was getting into her own coffin. 30 days after the woman climbed into the elevator, maintenance men returned to work and found her emaciated corpse. They had taken a break for the Chinese New Year on the day that the woman got stuck. When they left, they turned off the elevators to the building since it would be empty. But it wasn't empty. The woman got stuck in the elevator over the holidays and starved. This was a case of gross negligence on the part of the maintenance company. According to what the property managers told the Beijing Youth Daily, service workers returned the elevator to the first floor before they shut the system down. Then, they were supposed to confirm that nobody was inside. But during the police investigation, it was revealed that the workers didn't physically open the doors to look. They only shouted to ask if someone was inside. When they didn't hear an immediate response, 
they shut down the system and left for a month. But there was a woman in the elevator who needed to get out. The victim was identified as a 43-year-old resident who lived alone. The tragedy wasn't the first of its kind, either. Around the same time the woman got stuck in the elevator, a different Chinese woman got stuck in a mall escalator. The escalator swallowed her like a hungry mechanical beast. She tossed her two-year-old son out of the way in the split second that she fell into the escalator as it caved in. Thanks for watching! Let me know if you'd like to see a part two of strange places that people got stuck. Where do you think would be the worst place to be stuck? Let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time. Bye.